Gospel this morning comes from Luke chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. It talks about Jesus restoring a demon-possessed man. They sailed to the region of Gerasnes, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, what do you want from me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, what is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs and he gave them permission. When the demons had come out of the man, they went into the pigs and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man for whom the demons had gone out sitting at Jesus's feet, dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid those who had seen it told the people how the demon possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of the Gerasnes asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. So he got into a boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away saying, return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Many of you know I'm in IT. One of the things that I do is work a lot with computers. Most of my computers live at a data center. I'm sure you, those of you in IT will be familiar with that, Jim particularly. Um, there's many times that I need to work on the computer that I can't get there immediately. And I may need to call someone at the data center and be, the term is used remote hands. The remote hands person can be my eyes, my hands, my voice for me. They can look at the computer, look at the lights, the diagnostic lights, tell me something that's going on. They can plug a cable in, power it off and on, which works a lot. Uh, so this morning I'm gonna be Dwayne's remote hands. Uh, through technology, he has sent me his sermon. And so I will be his hands and his voice, and God will be with me. <laughs> Today's scripture lesson focuses upon something that many of us face on a regular basis. That, beloved, is the answer to the question of how do you deal with tough situations when they come into your life? There are some situations that we face and are able to resolve on our own. And then there are those times when we come across a situation that seems to take on a life of its own. And no matter what we do or how we try to solve it, the situation seems to get worse. Allow me to share an example of what I'm talking about. At some point, let me know if you can identify how you've handled some difficult situations in your life. As I mentioned in the past, and this is good because I also have an engineering background, Dwayne's engineering career came to an end because of circumstances that were out of, and I'll, I'll continue to read as Dwayne, out of my hands. The defense budget was cut and funding had changed, causing companies like mine to lose their funding for many of the projects that they were working on. This cut in funding translated into the loss of many jobs. 
With that said, one of my coworkers, let's call him Mark, was let go at the same time that I was. But unlike me, Mark had a wife and two young children. His wife was in school to become a teacher and to make things more challenging, he was the sole financial provider for his family. At first, Mark didn't worry because he was extremely talented and very good at what he did. Any company would have been blessed to have him on their staff. But it wasn't long before Mark realized that he was not getting any positive responses to his resumes. Some companies told him he was overqualified for the position. Others said they weren't willing to pay him the salary that would match his years of experience. This went on for several months. And as things were starting to get critical and the challenges of providing for his family felt like a losing battle, Mark did something that he had not done in a very long time. He closed himself in his home office and he prayed. When he told me what he had done, I asked Mark, what made you pray? Here he replied, I had exhausted all of my options. I had no one else to turn to but God. What I heard in Mark's story is not uncommon for many of us. Though we have a relationship with God, when challenges come our way, instead of going to God first, we exhaust every option at our disposal. Then, when there's nothing left to try, or if we hit rock bottom and we can't go down any further, we will look to God for help. Looking at Elijah in our Old Testament scripture, we find a man who was called by God to be a prophet, one who walked with God daily and had a strong relationship with God. But when Jezebel called for Elijah and all the prophets of God to be killed, instead of looking to God for help, Elijah took matters into his own hands and ran for his life. Like many, when Elijah reached the point of despair and was ready to give up, to the point where he wanted God to take his life. But God came to him to remind him that God was more powerful than anything Jezebel could do for him or to him. It was this reminder and the words of encouragement from God that gave Elijah the courage to go back and continue to work, continue the work that God had called him to do. In a similar manner, when the Man in our gospel reading was found to be possessed by many demons. Those around him tried to imprison him, subdue him, and restrain him. But it never occurred to anyone to seek God's help by praying for him. And it wasn't until Jesus entered into the picture and through the power of God, they freed the man from the legions of demons that inhabited his body. Beloved people of God, as we look to these two encounters, the message I hope you will take away from this is when challenges arise and problems come your way, know in your heart and in your minds that you can always count on God. Whether you're going through tough times that seem out of control or times when you feel that you have things all figured out, I want to encourage you to go first to God. Why wait until you're about to hit rock bottom or wait until you've exhausted all of your options? Go to God first. Save yourself a great deal of headaches, heartaches, and hardship. And to finish the story that I began with, after my friend Mark prayed, soon after that, he was offered a job with an accounting firm. He continued on, obtained the necessary certifications to become a licensed accountant and was able to get back on his feet. His wife completed her degree and taught in the New York school system until she retired about a year ago. The best thing that came out of his journey was after this turning point in his life, Mark and his family recommitted their lives to God and returned to the church that they were members of. Beloved people of God, no matter what you may be going through, you can always count on God to be with you through the good times and the most challenging times. So walk with God daily. And when you invite God into every aspect of your life, what you will discover is you will never have to face anything alone because 
you can always count on God. Amen. Amen. Our merciful God, who's pleased to speak to us through your word, grant us all grace that we may not be mere hearers of your word, but doers also. Give us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may believe what has been proclaimed to us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.